Welcome to today's session. We are going to continue in the book of 1 Corinthians in chapter 15. Let's quickly look at the last verse in chapter 14, where Paul wrote that all things must come to pass, that is in the church, decorously and according to arrangement. Paul was showing the holy people how they should behave themselves when they are assembled together among the church of holy people. Paul again addresses the Corinthian holy people as brothers, reminding them that they all had received that same gift of Holy Spirit life within them. They were all sons of God. God was their father. In verse 1 of chapter 15, Paul writes, but I make personally known to you, brothers, the good message. And then Paul explains, the good message that I good messaged or I gospelized, I preached the gospel. I passed on the good message to you, which you received from me. You took it when I presented it to you. You took it to yourselves. You accepted it in which also you stood and continued to stand. It is within the sphere of action of the good message that these Corinthian holy people were able to stand as opposed to falling. And we saw that previously when Paul wrote in chapter 1 and in verse 17. He talked about the good message and how that is what Christ had apostled him to do. That was Paul's ministry to be an apostle, teaching the good message to people. Paul also referenced the good message in chapter 4, verse 15, and in chapter 9. Paul says that it was by means of or through this good message that you were caused to be saved. This is how the Corinthian people became holy people. Paul says, with some word of the good message, would I good message to you? It was by a specific spoken account that Paul had messaged to them or gospelized to them. And then Paul adds, if or since it is a fact that you hold it down or you hold it fast, but, this is excluding of course, if you yieldingly believed or if you had faith or you trusted the word in a relinquishing manner, without a purpose. These people didn't have to know everything that Paul preached. But they did need to know a certain amount, as Paul wrote, some word or a particular amount, a part of the whole good message. Nobody could be saved, thereby receiving the gift of Holy Spirit, from God by means of the Lord Jesus Christ unless they believed regarding God and his son the Lord Jesus Christ and that God raised Jesus from the dead and gave him his new spiritual body that Jesus Christ is now Lord he is the Christ he is the resurrected one the anointed one the Messiah when Paul writes here did you believe without a purpose or in a relinquishing manner, yieldingly. It is written in such a way so that the holy people would come back and say, oh, we didn't yieldingly believe. There is definitely a purpose to the good message and our believing of it. We looked at previous chapters where Paul referred to him receiving information regarding the Corinthian holy people. He had received a letter or letters from the Corinthian Church of Holy People and he had also heard certain things from other people about them. Now in these verses he is jolting their minds to remind them regarding the good message that he had previously taught to them. He's also reminding them that the good message contains a lot of information you know, it includes how they were to continue to live their lives since they believed regarding the Lord Jesus Christ, since they became holy people. 
That's what Paul wrote a lot about here in the book of 1 Corinthians. It was how they were to behave themselves in light of the truth of God's word. It wasn't a case of just believing part of the good message and then forgetting about it. God wants his children to live according to the good message, according to God's word, his will. Paul continues now in verses 3 and 4 by reminding the Corinthian holy people what he had already taught them. He's helping them to understand that the good message not only includes the truth about redemption and salvation, which they have now and how to behave now, but it also includes information regarding the future, what's going to happen at a future time, the hope that they can have. In verse 3, Paul writes, In truth, I gave over to you, or I passed along to you, as part of the things that I taught you, that which also I received. Paul had also received information. Specifically, he received it from the Lord Jesus Christ regarding the good message. Part of which is that Christ died on behalf of our sins. Christ died in the interests of, or in the place of, on behalf of our sins, in accordance with the writings. God had already revealed information regarding the coming of the Christ, all the way back since Genesis chapter 3 and in verse 15. He had taught them regarding the fact that Jesus Christ would be killed, his crucifixion. Paul writes, and that he was buried. He was buried in the heart of the earth for 72 hours, three days and three nights. And that he was raised up and continued raised up. Jesus Christ was raised or resurrected by God. And now the Lord Jesus Christ is still alive. When was he raised up? He was raised up emphatically on the third day. Paul specifically states that here. It was after three days and three nights that God raised Jesus up from being dead, gave him his new spiritual body, and now he is alive. In accordance with the writings, again, the old covenant writings foretold that the Christ would be resurrected. The truth that the Christ or the Messiah would die on behalf of the sin of mankind so as to save mankind, was not kept a secret by God. God had first spoken of it, as we said, in Genesis chapter 3 and in verse 15, and then the, God continued to talk about it all throughout the scriptures. God talked to mankind regarding the Christ and the fact that he would be the redeemer of mankind, by the shedding of his blood, the sacrifice of the Redeemer. The Lord Jesus Christ himself did not commit any sin against God. He did not commit any sinful acts against his Father. But the Lord Jesus Christ gave himself to be the sacrificial offering, encompassing and encircling our sins, the sins of mankind. Thereby he made sure that everything was included. There was no sin forgotten about or omitted from his sacrificial offering of himself to God. And Paul repeated the fact that the information regarding the Christ had already been foretold. It was previously written in the Old Covenant writings. People were to look forward to the coming of the Christ. And now, as we read and con will continue to read here in chapter 15, we see that Christ has already been raised up alive from being dead. God raised him up. The Lord Jesus Christ is now alive.